So Very with cool. that, it keeps everything under tension and it's nice and tight for when you're warping your, your fabric. Um, but you have to cut forever on a laser cutter to get through material. In fact, this is uh, two pieces of eighth inch material plywood that I had to cut through and then glue together to make it nice and rigid, strong enough. So that's what I'm working on right now with the M2 is, let me see if I can't, uh, I, let me see. Yeah, I'm not gonna do that. All right, so I'll just pick up my laptop. So what you can see here is the next phase of it that also includes a stand. So what you can do, let me see if I can just turn this down so you can see it all right. You can actually uh, raise this up. I'm gonna get those bars out. You can just raise. Uh, I think we lost you. You're breaking us this up. And these are. Dustin, we lost you there. I, I hear you guys, but you can't see me. It's just, uh, it's like you're at the edge of your Wi-Fi. Yeah, I am. <laughs> That's too funny. Uh, let's see. OK. Is that any better? Oh, yeah. I don't know if you can. Yeah? That's great. Okay. Yep. OK. So now there's a table or a stand that can work with it, so they don't have to put it in their lap. And then um, with these bits right here, let me loosen that out so you can see this. I'm cutting the arm part way down one side so that it'll actually fit underneath there and support it. But then there is a backstop to keep it from slipping off the arm itself. So I'm working on that. All right. So all of this is cut with the M2 right there. That's beautiful. So you can cut out that slot. You can cut out these grooves right there. Get that the right amount. And so that's it's one nice piece. And that's not even two pieces together. Right. That's just one piece. Wow. One piece of solid wood. That's beautiful. So, and then, um, like I was beautiful. showing you guys a little bit last week, I cut out the, that gear, that handle. Mm -hmm. So you saw the, the acrylic piece and all that. Well, I have cut out a new version of it right here. And you can see it's all wood. It's all one piece now instead of acrylic and then another handle on top of it. Um, and I'm in the process of making those, those latches that lock into this as well. Mm -hmm. That's my next phase. And that will just go right on. Where'd it go? Oh, I've got, hang on one second. I'll be right back. <laughs> and Patrick, just to clarify, he's doing that wood piece with the M2, correct? Yeah. Awesome. Isn't that crazy? Yep. It's the M2. So oh, now, no. you know, crazy I can take talk. that handle what is the table for? and attach it. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, you can take that handle, attach it to the dowel. I'll uh, put a screw in there, but it's already uh, tight to begin with. So I've got to actually sand it to make it fit in there just right. So then this whole thing will just go right on in. Uh, you're not able to see it again. <laughs> Right on in, just like that. <laughs> and it will work on there. So I'm in the process of figuring out what the hardware needs to be on that um, and everything else. But that's kind of my current process right now. Nice prototype. Thank you. Yeah, it's, it's like really cool. prototype awesome. number four, yeah. I think now at this point. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, don't know if you, I don't know if you'll be able to see this, but I'll take this, take you over there. If you don't have about 50 uh, prototypes, you ain't doing nothing. Yeah, please do. I'm... That's right. This is what I'm talking about that I bottomed out the other day on. What I should have done was cut this out of thinner material. But you can see this is where the teeth will be right there which will go up against those teeth right there and lock into place. So it should fit in, you know, just like that. So 
that's the process I'm working on. Like I said, I'm not done yet. I'm still in the process of it, but that is what I've been working on, my little project. And as you can see, I'm in a one car garage. It's a hundred years old. That's my circuit breaker right there. <laughs> it's got glass fuses in it. Oh, this thing will run on any electricity as long as you properly ground it. <laughs> right on, that's great. Dustin, thank you so much, that's awesome. Uh, yeah. So one question for you on my end, like once you've got a, that tool done, let's say let's say somebody were to follow your instructions and make your final version of this loom, how challenging do you understand how to use it or how to truly use it to a point where you're making actual good fabric or is it, is it require a skill or is it just uh, like well, following the steps? It's just basically following the steps. I mean, really, the heddle is probably the, the real big secret right here, because you just put thread through each one of these vertical slots and then the little slots as well. And then the heddle moves up and down. And the ones that are in the vertical slot slide up, while the ones, or the ones in the middle slide up, while the ones in the vertical slot slide down, which allows you to slide your shuttle back and forth. I've learned a lot of terminology about fiber that I never thought I would have to, <laughs> working with my wife on this. Um, but it's been a lot of fun and really setting up the loom itself would probably take somebody about maybe half an hour. It'd be no, it'd be a lot easier than doing an Ikea cabinet just to set up. And then they follow the instructions for warping the fabric or the fiber, the, the yarn, and then setting up their weft that goes back and forth and the shuttles. And it's really just like, you just move it up, you set it in place you run your, your yarn through, you set it down. You run your, your yarn through, you set it in the middle, you beat it in, into place, and then you rinse and repeat until you're done. And then whatever pattern you want to work on. So yeah, it just, it's pretty simple process once you get used that old, that old prototype until she broke it, which is why I got off of the acrylic. The, um, the latches that lock everything in place, they wear out pretty quick and they break off. So the acrylic's not good enough. I'm hoping wood is better. And uh, maybe I'll get to the point where I have to 3D print these pieces. I'm not sure if that would be strong enough or not. But that's the next step. You know, cool. yeah, yeah, that's what I'm wondering. Yeah. Just test this to see if it, uh, these teeth break off. Right on. That is awesome. Thank you, Dustin. Um, hey, so Dustin. Yeah. Dustin, I've got a, a, yeah. a recommendation for you. I've used some of this on my project. It's called Wood Hardener. So if the wood's not hard enough, um, you know, it, it penetrates in there and then it kind of, uh, you know, makes it, makes it so it doesn't absorb moisture and things like that. But that might help you with, with making your, your latches harder if they're not hard enough already. Okay. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, I don't, I mean, literally I just pulled this off. I have not tested it, but it's, yep. well, it did break. So sure. that might be but something this, I have to try. This wood hardener is some weird stuff. I've never used it before, but I used it on a different project, and it makes it makes uh, plywood nice and you know a lot sturdier than than it was before. So, and then I it think, doesn't absorb water and stuff. So, mm -hmm. it's really might good give time. it a shot. It might help. It might help. Okay, I'll try right, to give that a shot. Yeah. Thanks, Matt. Put that All in right. the chat if you can. You can put the name of it that in the chat. Yeah, it's a. Uh, it's a it's a product I found at Home Depot. It's I know you're not using plywood, but it, Dustin, but it'll I think it might help. Yeah, it's not cheap, but it's great stuff. Yeah, I stopped using um, plywood because you know you get a void, and you need it for one of these teeth, and that's no good. Or it might just tear out one of the middle pieces of or middle layers of the plywood. So that's yeah. why I switched to hardwood. Understood. Understood. Yeah. Well, I just, I just used this on a project. I thought it was pretty good stuff. So might you want to give it a shot? Cool. Thanks. And Dustin, Dustin, for your gear design that you have there, um, those gears are standard gears for a rack and pinion ratcheting system. Uh, one thing that a lot of people forget is the bottom of the year gear doesn't have to be 90 degrees, right? So if you use a 1 8 inch bit to cut those, especially on wood where your tooth goes over and then back down. It doesn't have to come to a sharp point here and around. It's actually better in wood 
for it to come down and make a curve because on wood that curve is stronger. So you're saying on the tip of the teeth right there? Uh, on the on the or down in the valley, the valley of inside. The yeah. Yeah. So uh, I used a 16th inch bit on that. So it is kind of rounded. I mean, it's not real sharp right there. So yep. yeah, I'm yeah. just hoping what I'm hoping for is the strength comes from the ledge of the tooth, not the very tip edge. I'm not it, I'm hoping it doesn't hit that. Um, it will, when I did it with the, the acrylic, stress. it was fine. It'll what? It will, Sorry? but the stress, it, so the strength does come from the two flat faces of your, your two mm -hmm. gears meeting each other or the gear and the teeth meeting each other. But all the dynamic force and tension on that is actually forced down into the bottom of that ratchet tooth. That's why they're at an angle, right? It's pulling down okay. constantly. That's what makes the ratchet work. So having a little rounded bottom down there is a really good mm -hmm. idea. I, I like that you had a one eighth inch on there. I mean, it, it's even fine. Inch. It, yeah. It's even fine to round the tip of the, the tooth. It's okay. It's the two flat faces that you're worried about. So don't worry about trying okay. to make that a perfect gear tooth. If it was made out of aluminum or steel, yeah. Making it out of wood, sometimes you got to change the dynamic properties a, a little bit to make it stronger, right? Great idea. Great job. Right. Gotcha. And, and I should preface all of this or caveat all of this with uh, my history of, of understanding is coming from an art director or a graphic artist, not engineering. So I'm just figuring all of this out as I go along. Yep, that's that's why I was. I am no expert. You, you told me before <laughs> you was a, you you were an artist, not an engineer. So I, anything that comes up like that that I think I could give to your help, you know, I I'm more than well willing to help you out with that. Cool. Thank you. Sweet. All right. Thanks, y'all. Um, yeah, definitely keep us posted on that, Dustin. Um, I'm gonna do a little intro to my wife here. L, Ellen, who's on here. Um, she's been starting her own business with the M2 and been a great test subject for the company here um, to help us understand kind of the pain points that users go through. So I asked her to do a little show and tell on what she's working on right now. One of the things is for our house for Halloween. So Elle, you wanna take it away? Yeah, I'll follow the homemade loom. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. <laughs> it's beautiful, Dustin. It's beautiful. I can't, you'll have to show us when it's done. <laughs> yeah, thanks. Um, okay, so here's our Beetlejuice. <laughs> yeah. He's going to go out in our front yard with a bunch of other Halloween decorations. Let me, uh, let me spotlight you, Elle. Can you see him? Yeah. So he's made, we had to kind of cut the file up because um, just the limited in the size of wood that I can go and bring home. So cut up a couple two by fours and um, made two separate levels for him. So there's the background white, which is glow in the dark. And then the um, black, kind of striper level so you can kind of see if you get up close there's two levels to that and then more for like my style kind of thing we're working on is I can't really see it let me move it around here you got a lamp there too I'm counting all the sleds I see in the in the shot. <laughs> yeah, we got a few there. Oh, there we go. Yeah. Can you see it? <laughs> yeah. So this is a table that I just bought the file off of um, Etsy. It was a five dollar file um, for the table, and then I uh, just wanted to personalize it a little bit with an engraved ornament here. Give it a little something distinct. So that's what I have to share. <laughs> I think so. Yeah, do, that was very nice. We're going to do a big uh, Halloween extravaganza in the front yard. A lot of cut foam and, and thin ply items to really 
our house is orange from the outside uh, for those of y'all don't know. So <laughs> like it was made for it, right? Cool. Thanks, Elf. Uh, all right. Uh, Casey, you want to give us a rundown on your awesome shop you got back there or what you're working on? Um, okay. Uh, yeah. Got. So <laughs> it's a little dirty. I, I yeah, it was. Okay. So basically you can kind of see beside me. So you got to remember that I'm a dad, a husband. So I still, I have a two car garage, but half the garage is still my workshop for Harley Davidson's, our boats, RVs, and three cars for the kids and my wife's car. So I still need a mechanic shop, welding, cutting, and then all the tools in the back back here, which is all my mechanics tools and then everything lined up in there. So one half of my shop is uh, mechanics and you, I don't know if you can see it. I even uh, have rubber mats that I lay down on the floor because the, uh, the entire side of the shop on this side, I spend a lot of time out here. This is my man cave and it makes it a lot easier to walk around if you have a, a nice rubber matted floor. So that side of the shop is all of that. Uh, also my refrigerator for my rum and Coke and beer and everything else. And then this side of my shop is the starting the workshop. Uh, over here, I have the, one of the uh, 300s and then the Creality printer. I keep everything down here on a mobile base. I can roll it out and I can run it up on, um, it, everything is just set on little pipe and I can just run it up and feed it in there anytime I want. The top base up here is uh, really neat because it'll take those Texas size spools from Ziltec. So if I have a lot of printing to do, I can just put one of those 11 pound rolls on there and just let it feed for days on end into the machine. And it's just constantly pumping out parts. So there's that. And then uh, I have an organization area, which isn't too organized right now for uh, my woodworking and everything. It's kind of right now sitting uh, usually I try to keep as much as I can up off the floor, but you can see that uh, I have these benches here, these wall mounted brackets that everything sits in there. And typically what I try to do is in this one here, this is all my scrap lumber for skirts and stuff that I would use on the M2. Uh, here's some stuff I had for a different frame build and then my larger piece of plywood go over there. Uh, so that's the, the larger pieces over there. That's the scrap. This right here is just my quick tool. So my quick tool center, I use a lot of clamps and stuff, especially on this frame. So all of my clamps are lined up up there. Anything that I would need is right there, including all my wrenches for my quick change out for my bits, etc. Everything's hanging there and organized and ready to go. Then of course, uh, you guys have seen pictures of the frame a million times, right? So with the frame build that I have here, uh, it's the, I have a six inch skirts going all the way around it, the 10 foot top beam and don't mind the wiring. I'm doing some stuff now, but I got uh, two lasers and two M2s and everything all wired up in the same area. So it's kind of a mess right now. And uh, then you can see up here is my overhead beam. It uh, actually pivots. That's where I run all my cables from the wall over. Uh, my disconnects for my uh, electrical for my routers. I have six different routers. And then this right here just plugs into the bottom of my dust collection here that runs off of that. The dust collection runs up over here to the wall and then over here down and then into an 850 CFM dust collection port there which is actually fairly quiet. It's actually quieter than the router whenever I have it running. And then of course, on the very far end down here, I have my, uh, all my high pressure lines, my other vacuum system, my compressor, compressor, and then uh, 300 foot of high pressure air hose if I need it. And then this side right here, uh, this is my tool area. This is my workbench. This is where everything happens. I spend a lot of hours here. So this is where I come up with new items or you know, even just little gizmo, gizmos and gadgets that I use. My drill press and bandsaw and everything's right here on the end, but this is my primary working area. And in the front right here, 
uh, farther down here on this, you can see all of this. I have uh, different drawers like this right here is uh, all of my jig drawer. So <laughs> Patrick, you were talking about red jigs and everything. Yep. Um, I, I think I own stock in that damn company. Uh, <laughs> and I was noticing even your Craig stand there. Yeah. Yeah. There's another Craig piece back there. Those two stands are actually pretty. Healthy. They're some of the only folks innovating right now, I feel like. Yeah. And then the, this right here is all my electrical. So it's easy just to reach down and grab something. This is my fastener drawer. Uh, all of my components in here are my fasteners, et cetera. And then of course, all my uh, pneumatic tools are all in this drawer. So everything's kind of organized very neatly. I'm kind of a neat freak. And then on the ends of it are all my other tools that I put in there as well as a lot of my technical tools, my squares, my jigs, everything else goes in there. So, uh, yeah, and then of course my good old tried and true Bessie, uh, my table saw, she's been around for a few years. I, I do the same thing to all my tools. I modded this out as well. It's got a digital caliper on it so I can actually move the fence over in micrometers, meters or micron <laughs> and millimeters. So, Everything I do. And then right above is my primary air exchanger. It keeps uh, the air in the shop real nice and clean. It changes out the air in my shop six times an hour. So I can sit out here and, you know, have a, an open drink and I don't get dust even when I'm running the CNC's, everything. So that's, awesome. that's my setup. That's uh, that's my life, my hole in the wall. <laughs> Man, that's a workshop you could set your watch to. I love yeah. it. Yeah, and then uh, did you want me to show the folks the new uh, brackets that I designed? Please, love to see it. Okay, so there's been a question as to how you know a lot of people have asked me how they can adjust their Z depth and the depth of their bit that they put inside of their router, how they can adjust that to know that they're cutting a specific depth of wood. So I just came up with these little gadgets here. Each one of these is a, a half, then one, then one and a half, then two, then two and a half. So the way it works is, uh, let's see if I can get it in a little bit closer there. You choose the, the measurement that you want. So like this is one inch. Most of us are using three quarter inch plywood. So I would just put it on there. You lift the sled up and you lay it on there. And the sled is solid after that point. Once you do that, then what I do is I use, I'll, I'll do it this way just so you can kind of see it for now. But I would use Makerverse, the Z axis control to literally lift the router up or lift it down, right? And I'll move it down as far as I can until basically this, the back plate with the linear bearings is to my lowest point that I feel comfortable with. And then with that, I can go ahead and put my router in there. And as long as my router bit, I can adjust it inside of the router. As long as it's touching the deck and then I tighten it up, then I know this bit is going to go through at least one inches of wood. That's it. So like here, I have this adjusted to one inch. So you see whenever I go down, once I hit one inch, once I hit that bottom, it starts lifting off the deck. If I turn this over and I put a, uh, if I turn this over and I put a set of digital calipers on it, it's right at 1.12 inches. The, the bit sticks out of the bottom of the, of the wood. Awesome. So that tells me that I can go 1.12 inches of wood. And is this, are you gonna have this, assuming we have the marketplace fixed so that you can post things, are you gonna post this to the, for download? Yeah, I'll probably put them on there. Um, if anybody wants to print them, they can. It, it doesn't take much of a, doesn't take much of a large printer to make them. So yeah, that was kind of the same thing with the dust collection, right? I never really planned on printing and making them. 
but uh, people, a lot of people don't have printers. So this right here, I designed it to where it can be, I designed it to where it could easily be printed on any size printer, smaller ones as well. Sweet. So I'll put them on there and then of course, anybody that wants to buy them, I guess I could print them for them as well, but they'll have to pay shipping. <laughs> really cool idea, Casey. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Who wants to go next? He's got something to show and tell. Derek? Yeah? <laughs> I don't know if I have a lot of show and tell per se. That's all right. Um, let me turn my camera around. This is my little bitty shop that was uh, my motorcycle garage to start with. Oh, that's awesome. Um, <laughs> it's small. That's why when I saw the M2, I was like, that's uh, going to be perfect for my little area. <laughs> so, nice. as you can see, so I did my research and found out, yeah, it'll fit. Barely. <laughs> yeah, barely. And, you know, it goes past my door, so I had to change my door. Oh, my gosh. So, yeah. So, barely. <laughs> Um, I do a lot of, uh, poker chip displays is my main thing, I guess. If people don't know what those are, people collect poker chips at the hardware shops that have the, um, the city and state and Harley Davidson dealership on them. So I use the M2 to mount magnets so that I can then take my poker chips that have metal in them and they just kind of mountain place or held in place by magnets, I guess. So I've uh, done a lot of, uh, started doing some clocks. Those are pretty cool. Just cutouts. Now, Eric, are those your posts on the marketplace with like the Harley? Yeah, those are some old posts. I haven't done any oh, the marketplace posts lately. Yeah. But yeah, those are some of the first ones I did when I first got the M2. So there's a clock that I have painted or whatnot, but or put the clock guts in. Is that one piece or two piece? Oh, that's all one piece. Everything I do so far has been one piece. Wow. So those are all pocket, just pocket cut. Yep, that's, everything's pocket. So then when you paint the pockets, of course it stands out a yeah. little better. Um, I'll show you another clock that. Uh, I just recently made and sold. Sorry for the the newness. That's a 36 inch clock. Nice. 36 inches tall. And same scenario, pocketed with painted colors in the pockets. Now, Derek, how where are you bringing your uh, graphic design knowledge for these? Uh, I just like found some of these on Etsy. Some of them okay. just the designs, and then of course when you import it in. You pick out what parts to pocket. You know mm -hmm. the the least the least amount of pockets you can do. Of course, the quicker it is. So, you know, that's a, a cell phone charger or base I'm working on. <laughs> kind of do you do uh, a lot of local sales on these items? Uh, actually, you know, <clears throat> Tarly stuff, so I really can't sell. <laughs> But uh, uh, yes, yeah, I actually do them all over the states. Actually, I have, uh, and from before I had my M2, I've got four in Belgium. Actually, huh. I got four pieces I sold to a guy in Belgium. This is another cool poker chip display I designed. So in this instance, this is a picture, a personal picture. Of course, it's me on my bike, but I took a plexiglass and cut all the circles out for the placeholders with the M2 in plexiglass. And then, of course, the same scenario on the back are all the magnets holes that hold the uh, poker chips in place. But the main part of the picture doesn't get covered. So any of the dead area, I would call it, or abstract area is where I put the poker chips. And like I said, these are all the different places around the states that I've been and collected chips. You got spots you're still trying to make it to that are specific to those slots, or you just? Nope, just empty spots yet. I actually picked some up this week um, from Sturgis, South, uh, South Dakota. That's another, so my Sturgis display for my poker chips from there. 
That's a pocket cut as well. The Sturgis is a raised part. You ever make it and, to uh, Bikes, Blues, and Barbecue in Fayetteville, Arkansas? No, but I got some friends that uh, we're going to do that here soon. I got some friends in Arkansas, or not Arkansas, in Kansas City, mm -hmm. and they go to that a lot. So yeah, it's, it's I'm hoping five minutes to away uh, do from that. <laughs> I've heard it's pretty cool. This, so my son works at a local movie theater, mm -hmm. and this is a uh, poster display for the front of the theater that we pocketed out and painted. And this will actually open up. It's made to be a door, so we'll put the poster inside of it. And then, of course, we put LEDs around the inside of it to light it up. So that was his idea. But uh, he assisted on the design and putting it all together. So is anybody uh, doing some LED stuff? Not yet here. This is the back side with the LED that I cut a groove in with the M2 to do this LED strip. And then I'm gonna shut my garage door, plug it in stuff, but the LEDs are really cool. Glow. Uh, you also see this is another LED. So that's all carved in the backside of this wood. Um, so it's pocketed on the inside versus on the outside. No kidding. So certain LED colors uh, light it up. Certain colors, because the yellow wood disappear. As you can see there, it's just nothing but what wood. Is, how, what so is this? You, 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 po you pocket Sorry, it right me? towards the end, right? As I'm close, sorry? You pocket it as close as you can? Yes. Yep. So it's leaving just a thin layer of wood? Yes. Yeah, like how thin yeah. is that layer of wood you're leaving? Probably point. 05 or point close to point one oh it's just got the veneer left on the front of it right, <laughs> right. as you know at least as mount as you can yeah will give you the most glow so here's this uh <coughs> semi that i'm making for uh, uh my cousin's boyfriend so That's there's cool. areas that are cut all the way through to give it glow and then there's some areas that are um, like the words I left them in there, but left the outline cut all the way through. Of course, it looks better when my my light's not on from my window. But so LEDs are a pretty cool concept. It gives that glow behind the item. If anybody's done any of that, that's nice. I like that. That's beautiful. It's great work. So that's just kind of stuff I got laying yeah, around. Really good. So with the LEDs. I'm sorry. What what is the what type of LED is that? Okay, so your normal LEDs are a strip with the LED on the outside, a tape or whatnot. This is the LED. It's called um, neon LED, I believe. So the LED is in there, flat facing up, but the surround that is on here makes it shine outward. So you just look for look a, a side of this. rope LED. Yeah, it's like a rope, but the rope, instead of shining out where the LED normally does, yes. it reflects the other direction. So, because that's what's hard with LED strips if you buy, like this light, that one I was showing you, I had to wrap it around the backside and it just. Uh, I see. So cool. So it tries to face in, but it doesn't really that time in. before. So this new rope LED, or uh, it's actually like neons, what they call it, is uh, yeah. works a lot better. As I Derek, bring stuff and throw it away. Derek, would you so ever have go from there? In doing like a, a how-to video on neon lights, LED lights like that. Sure. Just like a really brief, like this is what I get. This is kind of, these are the one or two or three ways that I tend to pocket or utilize the LED best. Yep. And yep. that we would post the heck out of that. <laughs> that would be so, so. I don't know if any of you guys saw some of the, uh, the one post you guys did take and use, I think, was when I was controlling my whole system from my phone sitting on my couch. It was I a video so. we did of that. Oh my gosh. Yeah. That's been a minute. That, that was fun, though. I was sitting on my couch watching my system with the, uh, 
webcam and using the VNC to control it and watch when it's done. So pretty cool. That's awesome. Yeah, I could do an, uh, a couple different things on that sometime. Get a hold of me and I'll, we'll post something. Post it. I'd love to. Great. Thank you, Derek, for, for sharing. Cool. Yep, uh, you. Matt, you want to give us a rundown on whatever you've got to show and tell? Yeah, sure. Can you guys hear me okay? I got a lot of fans going on in here. Gotcha. Can you hear me? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. All right. So I drink a lot of whiskey and Crown Royale is my favorite. <laughs> so I made a I made a board here that says uh <laughs> Is that, is that coming out right? And it holds yeah, the shot right. glasses in there. Yeah, so I just had some extra wood. And, you know, just because I, I really like whiskey and, you know. Absolutely. I've already shown that at some of the, some of the meetings. Um, I, moved, I moved here recently to Houston. And, and so my, you know, my garage isn't up to the way I want it to be yet. But I put up French cleats on my wall. So I mounted, I had to modify my, um, my M2 that was already mounted to this wall for French cleats. And so I, I modified the, the system to hang on, on the French cleat system, if you all know what that is. And you know, I've been really happy with how everything's running. It runs really well. Um, I, I made this uh, bench because I didn't have a place to sit while I'm working on this stuff. Uh, I made the bench out of a file that I found on the Maslow forums. And so, you know, I, I put my computer there and I have it hooked up to the, to the M2. Um, and I burned out my, my shop vac with trying to dust collect for it. So one of the things you all might like, which I, I obviously have it on a cart now, but I'm using a router variable speed control um, thing. I can turn it on. Doesn't have to run full blast all the time. I can run it low, or I can run it full blast. So it's good for those six-hour carbs where you don't need full suction all the time. So it's not as fancy as Casey's uh, dust collection system, but you know, you do what you got to do. Um, That's cool. One of the things I bought, I went do a garage sale and I bought a bunch of boards like this that have, were signs that people have on their door. Just because wood's so expensive, I wanted to, you know, get it just for the wood. And then I, you know, I carved out this on my, on my M2. But what I'm covering up here is a mistake. And I think this might be related to what Lauren talked about the other day. I, I had this mounted like this in the M2 and uh, like this, I think. And I think I had it you know, the origin over here. Well, somehow the origin moved on me when I, when I, when I was done and I tried to recut because I only cut the H out. I had to stop for the night and then, you know, resume the rest of it later. Well, when I resumed it, it cut the H out over here. So it must have been up and over. And so that's a mistake there that I'm not too proud of, but it's just because I didn't double check my home before I, I did it. But again, this is just a, a board that somebody else had painted. And I just thought, well, I'm going to use that to, you know, cut stuff out. And so, um, uh, one more thing, or a couple more things here. I, uh, I have a lot of bicycles. So I have, um, I've been making some, uh, some bicycle stands and I've been iterating on it really quickly, but I've made a lot of them. So, uh, so I think this is version two of my bicycle stand, right? And it doesn't work too well because these, these vertical things don't hold the tire at all. The tires are round and they came out the back here. But I, I made it modular so that you can, you can take this apart and put it on a closer one if you have for skinnier tire bicycles or, you know, or wider ones for your, you know, your fat bike or whatever. Oh, it's so, a floor stand. Yeah, yeah, it goes on the floor. Okay. I've got them down here. Um, so, anyways, this is version two, <laughs> and, then, and then I got version three here, where you can see I I laid the the 
you know, the, the support back a little bit, but even this one doesn't hold the bike up completely. So, you know, there you go. And then I got version four here ah. and version four is a little bit wider on these cross pieces and you see they're, they're half, half lap joints. And so you can just put it in there and have, you know, a little bit wider. And I made the bump up here as well. They, they don't sit real nice when I'm holding them up. But when there's a bike in there, it's, it's kind of stable. You know, I've got a lot of uh, bicycles here. Um, actually, where the M2 was, I had a bike rack that held like four bikes. So I had to relocate four bikes into my house. Um, and those are the other ones that aren't in the house. So I'm a bike bike freak. So anyways, I've got three versions of this uh, or four versions of this uh, bike rack now. And again, you can make it skinnier if you if you want to make it if you have a skinnier tire bike. And uh, I just thought it was kind of fun. So anyways, that's what I, I like to do. And at work, we've got a computer that's got to fit inside a certain size volume. Um, so I made a box with finger joints about how to, you know, how how big that size is because it has to be exactly 500 millimeters by 250 millimeters. So I put all the measurements on there um, on the sides and the back. So I'm going to take this to work, and if, you know, if the computer doesn't fit in the box, it's a fail. So you know, but it made it with these finger joints on uh, easel. It was pretty easy. So. So anyways, that was, uh, it took a half sheet of plywood too. It was like 40, I think 46 inches by 46 inches. Uh, wow. And actually the uh, piece, of, piece of plywood's over there still. I've still got it on that. But This uh, finger joints, is that something that is a feature in easel or did you draw those yourself in easel? No, it's a feature in easel. They've got um, they've got a, a L, box I know. generator. They've got a box generator and... You can even put the dog bones in them because if you made, you know, just a, a regular rectangle, it, the, since the router bit is rounded, it wouldn't fit in there. So the, the, in easily you just click the button and say, Hey, I got it finger joints or add dog bones. And it adds a little, a little extra cutout. So those, those finger joints fit together pretty well. So. Is that um, the easel pro? That's no, not the free, on, that's not the free one, right? It's on regular easel. Yep. Yep. Yeah. It's on regular easel. You just have to go into the, the, uh, the, the, the applications and you just say, I want a box. And then, you know, making a box 500 millimeters by 250 by 500, it, it will make you the box totally that big, but I wanted the inside that big. So I had to add on the, the thickness of the material times two on, on all the measurements, but but uh, yeah, and then I just told it I want finger joints and I, or I wanted dog bones and the finger joints and it's, it's on the basic version, so. Yeah, so. and you can also set the offsets of your bit for your dog bones. The reason why they're called dog bones is your, your bit actually travels down and instead of coming down and going straight over, it comes down and then over a little bit back up and then over that way, when you go to fit the wood together, that corner piece has some place to go because your bit is round. Yep. So it actually cuts in a little bit. And in the dog bone generator, there's two pieces in E. So you can either use the box generator, which gives you all, all the sides to make a box, right? It gives you five sides, bottom, and then all four sides. Or you can just say uh, you can use the dog bone generator. So if you load your own design in there, you can click on those parts and then you go to the apps, the widget on the side, click on it, scroll down and say, create dog bones. It'll add dog bones to your design where it thinks it needs it. Now, if you have a real wavy component or something, it's probably going to freak out. It likes nice straight sides and edges and stuff, but then you can say, okay, well, I want it to come down. I'm using a one eighth inch bit. It's going to say it's going to come down. 0.125 or whatever over in that angle because of the size of your bit you can say no I want it to go down 0.122 that way you're not making such a big cut into that corner because what I've seen a lot of people do the mistake they make with uh, dog bones to begin with is they follow those standard parameters and when you fit everything together 
every corner where the dog bone goes into it like this, there's a little hole right here and right here. Mm -hmm. So there's a hole through the wood. It's not tight. And that's because they let it go down too far. And those are, there's just a number in there in ESOL that's called your offset. What do you want to do with it? Increase it or decrease it? So the way I made my son's desk, computer desk, custom desk a while back, and I put that up on uh, the Facebook page. Everybody was seeing that. But the way we did that was I put a piece of plywood on the M2 first, and I went through and I just cut a bunch of dog bones and started fitting them together. And I kept decreasing that offset until I fit them together. And I actually had to use a rubber mallet to kind of knock the wood together because it was so tight. And then at that point, I knew I was just a little bit too tight because wood swells and expands. So then I just opened it up one point. And after that, it was still tight. I had to push it by hand, but it worked great. And now I know that anytime I use that thickness of wood, I have those dog bone settings it's created and written down. And yeah, we're good to go. Yeah, yeah, Kill that's, it. that's really cool. It's, it's a very easy thing to use. I was really excited about it. I haven't fiddled with it as much as Casey has, but, um, mm -hmm. but yeah. Um, I did want to show the new router that I bought. I had, I've been, I have every clamp size for the M2. I have the 65, I have the 71, and then the 91 is in here. Um, this is the skill router, and I don't think you guys can see the digital readout, but you can set the, the speed of the spindle precisely as much as you want. Um, you just, you can tell it what kind of bit you have, how long the bit is, and if you're in softwood or hardwood, and then your steps. And it gives me like right now for step three, it's 16,000 RPMs. If I step down, it's 14,500, or it's gonna be wow. 1,500, 13,000 RPMs. And that way, you know, if you have some of those fancy Amana, Amana tools or whatever, or you know the spindle speed on your router bits, you can get it a little closer than that. because on the DeWalt that I had, I didn't know what what number three, setting number three was. <laughs> yeah. on this one's setting number three is 13,000 RPMs, and that's in softwood. I can change the settings here with these keys and say, okay, I want it in hardwood, and it'll you know likely spin it up a little bit faster. But this helps me dial it in a little bit more. But it fits in the uh, in the 91 millimeter clamp, and it's only $120 or something like that. So it was a it was a great wow. deal. And it's a two and a half horsepower uh, router. I've been using that little, um, the little Harbor Freight one in the 65 millimeter clamp. And that thing rocks. I mean, I threw everything at it. I made this whole desk out of here, out of one sheet of plywood and it, the thing never gave me a hiccup. I broke my DeWalt one, but uh, it's, not a, it's not a commercial for, for this router. But I just thought if, if, you're, if you're wondering how, how fast to run your bits and stuff, this has given me a little more, uh, you know, finer control because I'm a, I'm a software engineer, so I love numbers and you know stuff like that. Get this dialed in just right. So, so. Um, hey, you know, it it was really surprising to see a company like Skill, right? I would expect yeah. to see Makita, Dewalt, or somebody like that. Um, when last time we talked, I think we talked about this a couple months ago, right? Yeah. Um, yep. We were talking online and stuff. That's the first router that actually has an integrated VFD with a stepper software program in it. And to yeah. me, seeing somebody like me, like skill come out with that, it blew my mind. Yep. I, I would expect that from somebody like a DeWalt or somebody, you know, and I know. to see somebody or, you know, even, even some of the bigger companies, Triton, right? You buy a drill from Triton and it costs you 400 bucks. I mean, that's just <laughs> that, that brand. To see yeah. somebody like Skill come out with this at 120 bucks, it's mind blowing, man. Yeah, mind -blowing. I was like, and, and it comes with a plunge base and a fixed base. So you get two bases, you get a dust collection uh, attachment that goes over the bases. And this thing just, I think it works really well. It has LEDs on the bottom, so it illuminates the cutting area. And yeah, so if you're looking for one, I know this fits for the uh, 91 millimeter clamp, so. Um, but that's about it. I've got a couple of things on my bench here to attach wood. I made these uh, in easel uh, just for just to attach wood here. You see that I, I, I clamped the, the corners in there. 
So I made the corners just a little bit bigger. These are what my wife calls my Pac-Men. And I cut a bunch of these in uh, three quarter inch wood, but then I cut a couple of these in half inch wood as well. So, so when I'm, when I'm putting a board in here, depending on the thickness, you know, you can, you can screw it to your waste board and, and get it, you know, get it right. This is my own little design. And since then I found, you know, somebody has something that looks like a comma that you can, you know, twist it to get it to ratchet down a lot tighter. Those look cool too. Um, I just didn't think of that when I was cutting these out. I was very excited when I got my M2 to make tools or things for the M2. So that was one of my first cuts that I made was these, these clamps. And I've got a whole stack of them on here. Um, there's a whole bunch of them cut, you know, cut out just, just so that I have ways to mount different kinds of thicknesses of wood. So. And I think Lauren showed me this. He has one of these too, um, you know, having a, a, a T-square to get everything kind of, you know, squared up on the, on the piece to make sure that, you know, flush. You're, you're cutting, yeah, flush and everything. So yeah. I've got that. Um, so I always have my, my, my screw to get the, the, the screws in and out, but I use this for cutting off the tabs. This is just uh, one of those oscillating tools and it cuts the tabs off real nice. Mm -hmm. um, for those people who haven't, haven't tried that yet. I, all, all companies make these kind of oscillating tools. I just happen to use this one. So I always have that near the near the thing because it cuts the tabs off of my stuff. So. Sweet. Matt, have you designed any uh, any bins for your uh, French cleat system there? Because if you did, I would buy all of them from the marketplace. <laughs> I see that one there. So... That was one of my first things that I did too. So I did this one, as you can see, I kind of wanted a little handle out here, but I didn't want to, I didn't want to take up something with the back. So I made it, I made this and I made it so you could use dimensional lumber. This is a one by six and this is a one by two or something. And so you can just screw it on there. And I made four versions of, of my French cleat, but this is the one that has a handle you can put it on the thing and I keep my eyes and my ears on that, you know, keep the, mm -hmm. you know, the, 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 you know, the ear, earphones and then, then the glasses on that. And so you can put those anywhere you've got the French cleats. So I've got that on the other side of the other way, I have a couple more different versions. I tried playing around with different designs. Um, you know, I'm a woodworker and I, I make a lot of wood, wood stuff anyways. So, the M2, I'm trying to focus on stuff that I can't make with a regular saw, you know, and making, you know, repeated cuts with curves and stuff. I can do it, but it's just not going to be uh, perfect every time. So the M2 is great for stuff like that, you know, but if I'm just cutting boxes, I can make boxes already. And, you know, likely a lot of people can already. So, yeah, but, uh, but yeah, I love the French cleats. I, I moved here. Uh, two years ago, and so I put French cleats on that wall. I'm going to try to turn this around. So I put French cleats on this wall, and so I wanted to um, I wanted to put French cleats on this other wall here too. But it meant having my M2 down, and I I, I hesitated and uh, and and procrastinated doing that because I knew that the M2 wouldn't be up and running. But I, I knew I had to do it. So I love the French cleats and all the all the, um, all the stuff that you can put up on the wall. I have to make more of those. So that's it. That's my space. Awesome. That was great. Thank you so much, Matt. Lauren, you want to do a quick share? Um, it's a two and a half horsepower. Yeah, I'm on. You know, never hurts. Anybody else having trouble hearing Lauren? Uh, can you hear me? Maybe I need to turn my Wi-Fi back on. <laughs> it, it's it's touch and go. I'm I'm still looking at a picture of Matt here. Yeah. Oh, there yeah, we go. There go. Can you hear me? It's yep. better. All yeah. right, so. This is my little haven. There's not much here because uh, hopefully everything I've made sells, but 
uh, just some of my little tips and tricks that I go through. Um, I run an actual inch and a half foam backing, which is a bit much, but if you're trying to save your bit and you do a whole lot of cutting, which I do a whole lot of cutting, um, that's what I do. I just run a little backing. I recommend if you're, if you're going to do it, just only use the, uh, the half inch. It's more than enough. Um, and then I like to, I actually, sometimes I'll, I'll hand nail it in, which you can kind of see nails here, but a lot of times I like to shuttle my pieces back and forth. So if I'm moving it up or if I'm using scrap wood, I'll just drop in a piece of uh, three quarter inch or half inch um, MDF underneath it. Um, and that way I can shuttle it back and forth and actually do my cuts that way. And then of course I have my T-square that I love very much. Only Unfortunately, I don't have one in millimeters which would make it really nice, but that is what it is. Um, some of my other neat little things that I have, uh, you can kind of see I run mine with a five and a half or two and a half pound weights, uh, a little heavy for some people, but it is what it is. The only challenge is that you got to um, actually come around. I think you're out of Wi-Fi range. The original brick holes. Won't... Yeah, that's what I get from running off my phone. Can you hear me now? Yeah, it's better. Your your screen looks like one of those Apple filters. It's really interesting. <laughs> it looks like a cartoon, right? Yeah, it's it looks like one of those like Instagram filtering things or something. Because I've never seen it do something like this before. Totally frozen. Dang, I love this setup too. It's an old frame too, an old uh, math frame. Okay. Still have yeah, a lot of hmm. Still can't hear you, Lord. Yeah. Can you hear me now? Uh, a little better. All righty. Here we go. All right. I ended up uh, doing the, the weights and did the extra recessed holes in the back. Really nervous about doing it, but once you did it, it, it is what it is. Um, so those re work really well. I like the extra weight. Um, I'm running the original rigid. You can see my old sled up there. I don't have the French cleats, uh, but I do have a, a large amount of tools. If anybody doesn't have a desktop center for cleanup, I recommend it. Uh, that really helps when doing a lot of letters, which is what I do. Can y'all still hear me okay? Yeah, you were recommending what for cleanup? Uh, so if you get a spindle router or a spindle uh, sander, mm. I just got this simple one from Rigid. Uh, just so all my tools are Rigid, but um, it can change out from that to the... Uh, extra piece, I'll pull it up. You can swap it in and out. It's really good for cleaning up or doing the final cleanup. You got to sand a lot of pieces. It just swaps in and out. You can get the wind for like a hundred bucks on Amazon or, or 150 bucks. It's absolutely worth it getting that. Um, I was talking to the guys earlier during our meeting earlier today. Um, they're about 14 bucks at Home Depot. These sanding pads are really good. They're a double, uh, double layer. But all they do is they just stick these. I just take my worn out pad or worn out uh, sheets of sandpaper and just stick them on, and they're good to go. Nice. Um, also, if you don't have one of these kits, they're also really good for cleanup. It's just a little quick husky kit. A little uh, simple sanding tool kit. It just comes with a handle, and you just drop the pieces in. Um, and then a dowel is also really good for doing cleanup. Just wrap some sandpaper around it to, around it and go to town. So for uh, anybody, anybody that's going to do dog bones that you want to do, use the dog bone generator. Uh -huh. I highly suggest you have a set of files because yep. the MQ, even with the accuracy at one millimeter, one millimeter is a lot for dog bones and tight fits. Mm -hmm. So this side of your joints on your cabinet might fit perfectly, but when you go to line them up on this end, they're just a little bit tight. So it's nice to have, I like, like 
Lauren has there. I ended up using little round files and just running through those offsets, loosened them right up and they went together. That's awesome. Yeah. And I know uh, everybody has their own little way. I have a bunch of extra sandpaper that I've put for time. A little uh, CA glue or six picks. They don't, I mean, you can buy the cheap ones, uh, use like fingernails and stuff, the same. They work really well. Um, and I think Casey does. You gotta have my own nailer. Uh, really, really garbled, Lauren. Whatever. Uh, really garbled, having a tough time. I hate the signal in this garage. Yeah. You need a you need a mesh network or something. Well, I have a, a good Wi-Fi network. But I now have like fifteen different attachments that I got family in for the baby. So uh, <laughs> my challenge is everything in the house is running on, on the Wi-Fi right now. It's bandwidth, not reach. Got it. Okay. Yeah. But now I used to use screws. Uh, Matt, I know you said you, you screw it in. I used to use screws quite a bit. But if you ever get a nailer, they work great. Pair of pliers, you can pop it right off and pop the nails out of your scrap wood. It actually works really well. It takes zero time at all. Uh, I just run a little level along the top of the piece, get it level to the top, or run my T square, and it runs it's very quick. Um, I don't have a whole lot of projects up. I got you can see some names here, some simple stuff. My daughter's name going up in her room later today. And some other pieces. I think I already showed these to a lot of y'all. I don't hang loose. I remember the from earlier. We, I, I can't see, I can hear you, but I can't see your screen right now. Just well, I can see your screen, but it's frozen on um, something else still. But Lauren, I'd love, I'd love, you're like the, the finish, the master of like finishing projects, like sanding and post processing. The same way I was talking to Derek about uh, LED lights. Like, I'd love if you, I think the, the community would love seeing somebody who understand like you who understands how to like utilize all these different files and little little sanding options for the different types of projects. If you made a five minute video that went through like I use this for this and this for this, like that would be a huge op uh, win for everybody. I don't know if you have time for it, but just a thought. No, I, I do have the time. I just need to like I even got my uh, my camera and stuff up finally. Mm hmm. Uh, I was gonna show. I don't know if y'all can see this. Can you see the router? Can't. Still can't see your screen. You might turn off your. Oh, there we go. Yep. So for anybody that has a table saw, or if you don't have a full router table, um, you can buy some cheap Lexan from any of the home goods stores and build you a new router base just by following the template of your original router. So what I did was I basically just built a drop-in router table for my table saw because I have a larger router table, but it just doesn't work as well. It just takes up too much space moving it in and out of the shop mm -hmm. um but all this is and then you just use your simple uh plus trim bearing and then the piece and you clean up all your tabs and if there's any imperfections then it does very well cleaning it up um but yeah this sits right in the top of my table saw i just go to town and i basically just set it up as my m2 making the first cut and as soon as the first project's off i just run it through this machine right after uh Right as I'm doing a second cut, and so I'm. It's basically just a uh, like a factory setup, back and forth. But I can absolutely show that. I, I actually need to show. I have a project, some more uh, cuts that I got to do after this meeting, that I need to actually set the camera up and just let it watch as I as I go through it. Absolutely, that's what people love to see. Honestly, like you could do like a bunch of a bunch of videos. That people would just like sit and watch those. Yeah, I think I bet I'm those like I bet clean. Oh, go ahead, sir, Mike. I, I've learned a lot of stuff just from listening to his him talking about this and, and earlier stuff that, you know, gluing mm -hmm. sandpaper to popsicle sticks. I would have never done that. That's great. Absolutely. That's a great call. Uh, it does what it's supposed to. Um, I think a lot of y'all have already seen. I guess I'll show this to you. So a lot of y'all know Drew. Uh, Drew Placid from a lot of the Wednesday meetings. Can y'all still hear me okay? Can hear you, can't. You're frozen though. Oh, there we go, a little better. Okay, I'll give it a second to catch up. Yeah, so, right shopping. This is my redneck cart that I have here. Um, Waiting for it doesn't work perfectly, but if you have a, a 
you can basically do this on your uh, I can't see and that's you're how breaking up. Yeah, you're breaking up, but we can't see nothing. This is frustrating. <laughs> Sorry, dude. In an earlier meeting, I didn't have anybody here, so the Wi-Fi was great. Yeah. Just go kick everybody off real quick. Yeah. <laughs> hey, there we go. I see a cart. Yeah. It's just the plastic cart the stand you got there. Is that what you're talking about? Yeah, so it, it really, uh, all it is is just a plastic cart from Harbor Freight that dropped wheels on the bottom for it. I don't know if you can see any of that. Yeah, but yeah it works like a champ, a laptop on top, and then just put all bits in the tray so they just eat this machine and keep going. Um, but I'll probably just have to make a video. Pat, I'm, I'm sorry, I know this is kind of shaky. Yeah, no, it's all good. I really appreciate you uh, sticking with it. This has been really good, e even with the choppiness. But. Sweet. No, I'm cool. excited. Uh, I, I think it was Derek was doing the LEDs. I've, I've done a little bit of experimenting, doing some backlit stuff, not with a whole lot of success. So I'm, uh, I actually have some uh, that neon rope in my Amazon cart that I've been kind of itching to actually purchase and start putting on some of these names and doing Same. some backlit names. Definitely yep. buy it. It's pretty good. I think I got mine for 35 bucks for, I don't know. I don't remember how many feet it was. But I'm still I was going to ask, do you actually like buy the larger roll then cut it down and re-solder or how do you do? Yeah, that's what I, well, I, this is the first one I've bought. So this is the very first one I actually cut it and because um, I did it in two places on the back of that semi. So I cut it and then re-soldered the wires. The instructions come with it, uh, show you how to re-solder it and where to cut it. Yeah, because I, I actually looked at some videos online and it showed basically you can cut it. Some of some of the rope you buy, you can cut it every inch or two. So you actually can cut it like quite a bit. So I was surprised. So I'm pretty excited to actually do a lot of backlit stuff uh, as I move forward. Just I don't know if the I don't know if the customer base is there for it yet, but for my own stuff in my own house, I'd like to do that. Yes. Yeah, it's the stuff I got, I think, is www.ledmo.cn. Okay. okay. Yeah, I'll, have to, I'll definitely have to get into that. Oh, I don't know if anybody can see these. So a lot of y'all know you're using eighth-inch bits. If you buy mm -hmm. burrs, they're great for cleanup. You can just get those. It's a five six. You can get that at uh, Home Depot or Lowe's, right? Right. The Dremel section. Um, where it's at is if you build yourself a larger base. So I'm a king of like, as y'all know, I like to see what the machine. Um, and then, at as I test the outer parameters, mistakes are going to occur. And so there's certain times when sanding down to, to fix the error just isn't the best option. So I'll actually take a burr, put it in my, uh, my router, and then actually uh, use the router to just slowly cut the, the, the issue away. Um, it just cuts a lot faster than actually having to, uh, you know, sand it down on the, on the desktop sander or with an actual pad. But those are actually pretty handy tools to add into your uh, collection. And then awesome. if y'all haven't, I don't know, like Tools Today doesn't in any way sponsor me, but I know I've talked about it before. These little mini uh, flush trim bits or roundover bits. Let's see if I can actually get it to focus. Man. That's a tiny uh, eighth inch uh, bearing there. So when you put it in, in comparison to another bearing, you can see how tiny it is. It's really good. They're not too expensive either. They're actually pretty cheap, but they're a great little bit to add to your collection um, for when you're doing cleanup. That's awesome. Great. Sweet. Thanks, Lauren. Hey, guys, I, I just posted Derek's Facebook page for his store. 
Harley dudes, custom wood designs. Those are some awesome builds you got in there, Derek, by the way. Thank uh, you, Hutch. Yeah. It's been fun with this M2. I had a uh, Bob CNC before, and with the tabletop version, it just limited, and it took up a lot of space. Nothing against Bob CNC, but, and the main thing when I looked at the M2, and I called you guys actually before I pulled the trigger, um, was my biggest problem is I'm cutting on the front side and I'm cutting on the back side. Mm. And my biggest problem is depth, um, staying consistent with the, and with this writing on the material, that is that elimination is gone on the front side anyways. Also, awesome. that was my main concern is my wood thickness can vary. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. So. Cool. Lauren, you're you going to say something? Taking up how much space? Yeah. <laughs> no, I was, I was just listening. Okay. Um, there is one other thing I can mention, and I, and I know I've said it a thousand times, so I don't I don't know if, if there's anybody new in here, but uh, the advantage of like if you're doing multiple thicknesses. Uh, you can just tape, and I haven't put the tape on it yet, but I've got a couple of cuts lined up on the computer right now, and I'll just put tape right across here between the wood, and you'll be surprised. That it keeps the router from tilting uh, even so slightly, um, and the tape, especially if you use frog tape or real thin painter's tape, you'll never know uh, that you did anything with it. It, it, won't, it won't register at all. And talking about holding the board to the back or putting a covering the seam between covering the seam because a lot of times when i'm doing it i'll show it on the side yeah I do so that a lot too. of times cool. i don't have this bottom piece here and i'll put it up and tape it just like that but it won't let it fall the actual tape will hold it in place hmm. um I never but it's very that. good yeah I've it's got very mine. good if you don't have a full skirt around yeah. it I don't have like i'm thinking multiple thicknesses I just can't have a single thickness all the way around and always uh be adjusting it so i just keep scrap with it and a little long if i need to yeah i've got a skirt around mine that i kind of build out and i kind of keep my projects at 48 wide by 32 inches tall so i just got a spot that i stick into but yeah that's a good idea yeah Absolutely. All right. I think we got uh, Mike left on here. Mike, did you want to take us through anything on your end? Uh, no, not at the moment. I'm actually, I'm driving right now to uh, oh. top it off with my uh, fiance and uh, my stepson. What's up, y'all? Hey, Roxy. Hi. <laughs> well, at some point, Mike needs to show us all that, that sexy new Onefinity he's got. Things sweet and on back order. <laughs> cool. Any other uh, back order? Do what? It's on a five month back order. Whew. God, that's crazy. Infinity. Five uh, months. So, Patrick, I was going to, if you don't mind, I'll show folks what I did with my router, kind of like uh, what yeah. Warren had done. So, what I did was that table saw that 52 inch table saw that i have mm -hmm. i don't know if you can see it here but basically what i did was inside of the table saw on this end i basically built an insert and i used the m2 to do this i bought this plate right here uh on amazon it was like 38 bucks it mounts my router underneath of it and i can also adjust the route i can adjust the whole thing from here through this little <laughs> hole right here it adjusts so i can raise it and lower it <laughs> but this right here, I just took the thickness of the plate and routed it around and put that design into easel and then cut it and cut it out. But the other side that's really cool is my my T square, my fence right here that I have the Bessemer square. I built this right here that goes on to it. And I just basically clamp it with a couple of clamps. Then I can use my table saw, my fence to actually use that as the uh, fence for my router. And in the router, I have the cutout right here in the front for the vacuum system that I just used a piece of pipe that comes from my vacuum cleaner, ran it from there, right here, it removes, 
run it from there out to the end. So all I do is I hook it up to my regular vacuum cleaner, turn it on, flip on the router, adjust the fence, and away you go. That's so cool. <laughs> the M2 is what built all of that. I just laid it out in easel and then threw it all together. But the only thing I had to buy was that $35 plate on Amazon, which fit the router that I had. So I have one dedicated router to that. And it's, I want to say it's an old Ryobi. It's been in there for a while now and it just keeps pumping, just keeps working. And I just want to like, I, I, we've got all these awesome tools that we've, we've basically, I feel like this community, plus if you add the Maslow community has essentially created like a Harbor Freight's worth of tools that we, we can make with project files, right? We need to find, we need to start collecting those, right? Because I feel like you could, <laughs> the M2 itself becomes worth it. If you just think about all the things like that, you can manufacture for yourself, right? That you yeah, don't and then the, on top of that, and the, on top of that 3D printer from the, you know, the maker 3D yeah. printer, well, you know? Exactly. You combine those two things. Exactly. Here's, here's the other thing. It's a table oh. small sled that ensures every cut that I have for the small cuts, I can cut them at 45s or whatever. This whole thing right here was made with the M2. Also, all of my push sticks for my saw, I make those in mass. I'll buy a four by four uh, piece of lumber. I'll put it on the M2 and I'll cut 10 of them at a time and then just stack them up. And as I'm done with them, I just cut them up and throw them away. Yeah, burn pile. Yeah, Great. pretty much, pretty much. Hey, I got, I want to share something real fast. Uh, yeah, yeah. All, uh, do you see that, that 16th uh, inch bit? Yep. Okay, so it has a quarter inch shank on it. So this is what I got from Amana, and this is, works really well. I don't have to worry about any um, piece that goes onto my collet. It just goes straight in. It even has a little line, tells you where you got to put it. So if you're buying 16th inch bits, I highly recommend getting something like that. And then uh, you guys were using your T-squares. And let me show you this. So I took my waste board. And hopefully you can see that OK. Frozen, I think. I've got these vertical lines right here. Do you see those OK? Oh, I'm not frozen. There we go. Now we're better. Yep. <laughs> you're not going to be able to see it. So instead of using a T-square on my, my waste board, I've actually cut the vertical line and the horizontal line. So I know exactly where I need to be. And I can board without having to do any extra tool. I just lay down on that line, yeah. screw it in or attach it however I want, and I can just start cutting. And hopefully you can see this. I stay over far enough away. You can see this tool right here, or this bit right, this piece. It's only an eighth of an inch off of the top and it's half the bit width on the bottom and i was able to cut everything out right there and i'm i'm that accurate with that line that i cut into my waste board what are you doing are you using what are you doing to get that accurate with it are you going through the precision calibration or like what is uh yeah i, I mean i'm um i was i was 1.6 millimeters over seven feet you know, so it's it's good enough. It's just, <laughs> I can get this board out, and I can cut. I can cut five feet along, and I, I don't cut off the edge of that board. Right. So there's that. And then, <laughs> just um, Casey, you inspired me. I've already worked on this once, but I'm going to go back and redo it. You see my workbench there? I've taken a cheap uh, table saw, cut it out an insert, and just set it in there. So that's my whole workbench, and I can just raise up my table saw. And I've got all of that to support my material when I'm cutting. Yeah. So I'm going to go, I'm taking, I've been taking notes of what you were doing right there. And I'm going to be, yeah. Uh... Yeah, it works great. Yeah. I, I think just about every one of my tools. Improving that. Of that. So thank you for that. Every, every one of my tools, I buy a tool and then I find out some way to tinker with it and make it better. I mean, that's just, I don't know why my wife makes fun of me for doing it, but even if I buy a $3,000 tool, I'll figure something out on it. I got to fix something, right? It's never good enough. I got to do something with it. So that's just, that's, that's how I do it. And then, you know, with the M300 or the 300 printer that we have in my Creality printer, you know, those, those opened up a whole new world of possibilities because I could print 
any tool, any shape, any design, any engineered spec component, I wanted to. And, you know, like the dust collection, everything you guys have seen, that's what the power of 3D printing does. And you mix that with the CNC machine. And, hey, you know, the only thing I'm not doing right now is metal work on my wood tools. I mean, I have a whole metal shop over on this side of my, my shop, but over here, you know, won't be long and I'll figure out how to cut aluminum. You wait and see. We're working on that too. Yeah. <laughs> and Lauren, your uh, router insert that you have on your table saw that you showed just now, I'm going to put one of those in that workbench. So I can just put that in there really fast. That was a really good idea. Yeah, just don't do it like by hand. I did it by hand. Don't do it by hand. Put it, put it on the M2, right? Put it on the M2. I did it. And afterwards, I was like, wow, that was really dumb. I have a machine there that knows how to do that. <laughs> and can put the dog legs in. Uh, yeah, it's just a lot faster. Um, flush trim bits are a huge win with this machine. So yeah. Patrick, there's a, a lot of folks on here that are legacy users, power users. You want me to give them an update on what we've been doing with that seven watt laser? Uh, yeah, yeah, go for it. Let's do a quick update on that. Right. So we haven't given up on it. Yeah, we've given Casey one of our seven watt lasers to test. He's running it through its paces. So I, what do we got now? Five watt? 2.8. So I've actually got this. If you look at this. This one right here um, on five ply, I got all the way down to the last ply, which is less than a millimeter thick. And the problem with it is, is I've designed this whole new insert that allows for all the cooling and everything for the laser. What happens is the laser mount, it bottoms out the, the laser itself, the bottom bottoms out on the wood. So the laser can't keep ratcheting down every time it does a pass. So this morning I was talking to Patrick, I'm gonna take the laser out of that case. And we found that I can get it to cut deeper, but you have to utilize the Z axis at every path to keep that focus at the bottom of that cut that you, that you have. Uh, so I've been able to cut 98% yeah, uh, of the way through, um, yeah, through the wood through our, our thickness of the wood that we were looking for. Because the natural focal distance of it is an eighth of an inch. And so like to get to that last portion of that eighth of an inch, you got to run that lens straight into the piece, right? So that's the challenge we're running into. Well, and not all of your wood is exactly like you buy one eighth plywood. It's huh. not one eighth plywood, right? Exactly. So it could be a little bit thicker and you need to cut all the way through that to keep that focal length as you're going down. I've literally got it to where I figured out in um, I figured out in Lightburn how to turn on your Z axis and then say I want to adjust each pass I want to adjust the Z axis the step by this much based on well basically how many passes are you doing versus the thickness mm -hmm. simple math you do that and say okay this is going to be my Z axis step and it'll sit there and it'll do that you can watch the Z axis slowly work its way down but on all three of my passes there, those are my last three I did. Um, I literally got it down to where I could take uh, like a paper clip and I can poke it all the way through because all that's left is just that last bit of, you know, the five ply, basically the veneer that's on the back. But uh, yeah, so. So could you sand it? Yeah, you could probably could you sand, sand the backside and just buff through it. Yeah, you probably could, but I'm a lazy jerk <laughs> i want to cut it all the way through i you want to hand plane it right no so anyway um but the other side of that is the way i did that was we needed massive air assist so the air assist is a big deal uh that got it all the way through that keeps the that keeps all the hydrocarbons and everything out after you've burnt the wood basically all the ash it keeps that out of there so that focal length can constantly hit the bottom you do need air assist, and I think it's going to take more than a more than a fish pump. You know, a lot of people use a little uh, pump for their fish tank to pump air. It's going to take a little bit more than that. But um, so anyway, you know, just I didn't know Patrick if you wanted to give an update. It's the seven watt isn't dead. It, I think it's doable, but it's going to take a little bit of redesign to make it happen. Yep, I think I think that's the case for sure. So hey Casey, so have you tried any uh? 
because I'm really excited about using it for uh, using laser as a kind of a, a pocketing um, for pocketing like us less than a 16th of an inch or a 32nd of an inch. So as you don't just burn, but actually cut away, um, you know, like when you do the laser engravings, you'll see them on like awards and things like that or plaques. Take a long time with this sucker to, to I'm pop. just curious. Well, I mean, you eat up, you will eat up. Um, so you'll eat up a 30 second with just the dark area. So let me show you this. Oh yeah, Derek's got one right there. And it's, it's probably, I don't know what so, the depth is on it, but I can definitely feel it quite a bit. Yep. Yeah. So whenever you color these in like this, mm -hmm. all it does is it burns that out. See the chard? Right. Yeah. It, it burns that out and removes wood. And if I run my finger across that, I can feel that that's actually deeper. So if you take a brush to that and you scrub it, does it what, what is the result? So if you, yeah, like a wet, because I've seen online, a lot of people will take a, like a hose to it and actually spray it down and then quickly dry it up so the wood don't soak up too much. Uh, Brass brush. Like yeah, got several of those. I don't remember what I, this was my, one of my first burns um, and Casey helped me get my settings figured out when we were doing this. But, yeah, um, so it actually comes pretty clean. Oh yeah, I, you can't see that, but it actually cleans that out and yeah. it actually gets really, it's pretty deep actually. That's, that's how deep that one is. That's yeah, inches just there, simple. Derek? Yeah. Yeah, because that's, that's one of the key components I'm looking at buying that laser for is doing exactly that right there. Huh. Um, just because you get so many frizzies on, on a lot of wood with the plywood if you're doing th thin cuts like that um but the ability to use a laser to pocket with zero frizz you just take that brush to it um yeah so if with that that's the 2.8 watt laser with a dollar 99 uh, harbor freight brass brush i love my brass brush the key they're good for cleaning router bits too <laughs> yes <laughs> they are <laughs> And if you haven't used them, like, like you were just showing uh, as the team, they're really good. If you're having uh, V-Groove fuzzies, just rush your, run your brass brush over the fuzzies. It'll take them right off as well. I've always used uh, one of those green scrubber pads. Those are the yep. things that I use to take away burrs all day long. Scotch bray? Yeah, Scotch yeah that. Yeah. You also, yeah. well. Derek, that's I, a great job. How long, Derek, sorry, Derek, how long did that thing take you there? That took a while. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I don't remember how long it did take. It probably, you know, close to maybe a, a good day. Yeah, I was going to say that's. So, but I also went back uh, a second pass and did an outline of it all because I didn't do the outline first. So it, I did the outline afterwards and it really made it pop. Yeah, I was nice. going to say, Derek, whenever uh, we were, when you were working on that and we were talking about it, you were well into. 20 some odd hours on that and you were about ready to do the finish pass on it so it took a while yeah. a lot yeah. of that coloring in took a while hey derek how that's, big 17, that? that's what i was getting ready to say that's uh, uh i want to say 17 inches in diameter heck of a laser cut yeah 17 wow yeah that's impressive so, that's a beast of a cut for a laser yeah yeah but it looks beautiful and i started to <laughs> try to cut like uh, do several passes and cut through it so it was doing it but it, yeah it just it wouldn't it'd take forever that's yeah. half inch uh half inch plywood yeah you definitely need, gonna have to route that sucker out or get a yeah. some sort well, of what I'm gonna do is something I'm gonna, <laughs> i'll get it set up where i can uh, take my two files my uh, uh easel file and my light burn file and get them set up the same so that I can keep the piece in, I can take my laser out, put my router back in and do my, my mm -hmm. cut. Yeah, that's what I've been doing with all those um, little cutting boards and charcuterie boards I've been making yeah. on mine. Yeah. Yep. Well, cool guys. This has been, this has been fantastic. Um, I was going to show you all one other thing. We've been talking so much about tools and stuff. I don't know if you all are big into popular woodworking, but 
I saw this one the other day. Um, I got a subscription. It's been a while, but look at this workbench. I've been wanting to make this workbench. So they, they call it the modern makers workbench. I've been reviewing it and all the different features it's got. It's just incredible. It's beautiful. Um, I've been thinking about trying to make one actually. So I don't know if you all are interested or anybody else is looking to make a workbench, but this is the one I'm going to try to make next. That's the goal anyway. It'll probably take me three yeah. months to get it done. But if anybody's using using these uh, digital tables that uh, automatically adjust for your height. Oh yeah, those are great. Um, I found them on Amazon. Uh, minus the top, which is this is an old computer desktop for forty bucks, forty or sixty. It might. I'm sorry, it's uh -huh. probably sixty dollars. So you just add your own top. You add your own top. Everything else comes with it. Mechanics, the digital, the motor, everything. 60 okay. bucks, and I can adjust my uh, workbench for whatever height I need if I'm I doing stand-up or sit-down. Yeah, I got two I think, of them. I got one on my workstation, too. I think I know a tool that could cut out a tabletop. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hmm, I wonder what it could be. <laughs> buy one of those <laughs> if only <laughs> for cheap too <laughs> all right guys well hey thank you hey does anybody have any issue with posting this to the owners group and just saying hey like we had our first show and tell i want more and more folks to get engaged on this so okay great okay. um also if you didn't see it i posted uh in the owners group if anybody's interested in doing some fantasy football we got a few folks signed up i'm just doing a small team so yeah, I don't know if anybody's interested, but just put your name in the comments section and I'll add you to it. Um, but yeah, that's about it. Great. Hey, thank you. This is my first one. Oh, sorry, Derek, go ahead. Go ahead. I say thank you. This has been my first uh, meeting or whatnot I've been on. And very, very good. Oh, great. I'm glad to hear it. Yeah, let's keep getting more people engaged. Like this is what we're trying to do. The the thing that we've I figured out or I, I keep hearing about this this business is that the thing that's separating us more than anything from other CNCs is just that we engage in the community. <laughs> and uh, like, I, I think that's just going to keep being a hallmark of who we are as a business. Like this is the fun part, like not doing the spreadsheets or working on inventory or anything. it's this stuff. This is what makes it all worth it. So yeah. Thank you all for making it fun. What were you going to say, Mike? Um, are we going to be doing this weekly or are we going to be doing this uh, like every other week or what do y'all think? No, nah, I, I don't think, that often but uh definitely a few times i probably think of like a two times a year or something like that what's everybody up to and then mix it like if we have other ideas of stuff that we'd like to do i'm all ears so like somebody has again like somebody wants to do a deep dive into you know uh led lighting or somebody wants to do a deep dive into one of casey's tools that he's made or something like we can do any of these things like this is just let's talk about what we want to do Let's make it fun. I don't know. So if anybody has ideas, shoot them to me. We'll make it All happen. Right. I'd almost say, like he said, uh, maybe once a month would be a bad thing if you could do it. But Okay. Yeah. I know you said two times a year, but I, I'm thinking I like seeing these guys watching this stuff. <laughs> All right. Well, let tell you what. I will, uh, I'll I'll talk to the team here. This is great. I'm glad to hear it. Uh, I'll talk to the team here, and we'll we'll set it up at least, at least quarterly then um, and, and see how it goes. Yeah. Awesome. All right. Well, thank you, everybody. Have a great rest of your evening, and we'll uh, we'll talk soon. Have a nice evening. In the chat. Bye. Bye.